our general recommendations for whey protein are to use it to supplement your protein intake until you hit a protein intake of around one to three grams per kilogram per day, depending on your goals and your body weight and, and all of the other stuff that we're gonna cover next unit. When it comes to casein, uh, casein is a slower digesting protein. It forms a, a gel, it kind of curdles in your gut. And as a result, the amino acids are kind of, they're drip fed. Um, so its main claims are that it reduces protein breakdown. When we, we looked at muscle growth back in, um, back in unit one, we looked at muscle protein synthesis versus breakdown. Well, Mike Zordos will revisit that again in module three. Um, it is effective at doing so. There is research that says casein is effective at reducing muscle protein breakdown. Um, same deal as with whey protein. Um, it's probably not dangerous unless you have pre-existing kidney issues and use it to supplement up to one to three kilograms of total protein per, uh, grams per kilogram, sorry, of total protein per day. Branch chain amino acids are another incredibly popular supplement at the moment. Um, They've had some, again, pretty weird and wonderful claims made about them, um, especially with regards to how much you should, you should take. Um, as to whether they're effective, to sum up, the research tends to show that they're probably not effective unless you aren't consuming sufficient protein per day. If you're not consuming enough protein, they may well be effective, they may have some benefit. If you are, they're probably not worth it unless you potentially, unless you're training in a fasted state and you are really, really worried about muscle protein breakdown. But there's also the fact that having a protein shake before you train probably has the same sort of effect. Um, yeah, it might be a few extra calories, but the whole training fasted thing, you know, that's not necessarily supported by a ton of research when it comes to um, burning more fat, uh, you are probably likely to perform worse in a fasted state. Um, so the whole, oh, I have my BCAAs because I train fasted thing, it's like, well, you could just have some food first and then, then go train and that would probably lead to a better training session and lead to you wasting less money on branch chain amino acids. So in terms of a dose, um, the main component of branch chain amino acids that you're looking at is leucine itself. Um, we covered leucine in a previous unit. Um, we know that leucine kind of kickstarts muscle protein synthesis, and we know we need around about two to three grams of leucine in order to um, saturate that muscle protein synthesis response. If you're looking at an equal amount of leucine, isoleucine, and valine, which are the three branch chain amino acids in a supplement, you probably need about 10 grams of total BCAAs to get that two to three grams of leucine. A lot of branched chain amino acid supplements have different ratios in. So basically look for the dose that gives you around about two to three grams of total leucine if you're gonna take BCAAs. Speaking of leucine, um, some people do just take leucine by, them, by, by itself, which you know, is fair enough. Some people think that um, if they add it to a vegetarian meal, it can improve the amino acid composition of the meal. That's not a topic we're gonna to get into right now. That's a topic for another day. Um, the main claims for leucine are, as I said, it stimulates muscle protein synthesis via the mammalian target of rapamycin pathway. Pathway? Pathway. Um, it is effective, but the lone study on freeform leucine supplementation shows no real changes in lean body mass or fat mass with four grams of leucine daily. That was a fairly poor study design, if I remember correctly. Um, but generally speaking, leucine's quite expensive. It tastes really, really terrible. Um, and high doses of leucine may increase serum ammonia as with any amino acid supplement. Um, otherwise, it's, it's not dangerous. Um, there is a tolerable upper limit of 500 milligrams per kilogram um, per day, which is 40 grams for an 80 kilo male. That's a lot of leucine. The last uh, protein or amino acid supplement, this could also fall under the, the performance enhancement supplements that we're gonna look at is HMB, um, either the calcium salt of HMB or the free acid form of HMB. The main claims for HMB, are, which is a metabolite of leucine, are that it decreases muscle damage and it attenuates central fatigue, whatever that might be. Um, 
the main mechanisms behind that are that it, it, it's involved in the creatine kinase pathway to decrease muscle damage. Now, as to whether it's effective or not, it may be moderately effective, but the generally speaking, the longer term studies on it show fairly equivocal effect, especially when it comes to, to trained individuals. That is, if we ignore that one study done um, by a certain professor over in the States that showed that HMB free acid was, I think, either just as effective or more effective than um, certain steroids have been shown to be in untrained individuals. So I think we can safely ignore the results of that study for now. So is it dangerous? Highly unlikely. Um, the dose wise, it, it tends to be researched in the you know, doses of one to three grams per day. Um, if you're taking the free acid form, then take that 30 to 45 minutes pre-exercise.